I particularly wanted to rewrite the the end. You see, the problem with the Mozart Salieri story is that there is no end in, in, in life. I mean, one survived the other by 32 years. It's not much of a climax. Um, there has to be a scene between them, a confrontation scene in a play. That's what drama demands. Um, and I had to supply it. The, the first scene that I supplied, I, I, which involved a long confessional from a drunken and slightly demented Mozart, didn't really please me very much. And Salieri just stood in a mask and heard it all. And I always wanted to rewrite it. And in Washington I got my chance and I opened up an enormous can of beans because uh, I think I wrote a different confrontation scene for that play every night for a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And the actors, uh, Ian McKellen and, and Tim Curry, were superbly supportive. I said, you know, I'm probably driving you mad. And they said, never mind. I mean, we'll learn a new scene every night. We'll do it because we wanted to be absolutely right. They were marvelous. And Peter stay, would stage every, the scene every day for me, uh, wonderfully, and set it up. And slowly, we, uh, over that immensely uh, tormented and tormenting week, we put, uh, we inched up on that scene. And, and, and well, that's not it, but it's almost it. That's not it, but it's almost there. And finally, I reached what I wanted. And I remember the day when I did. It was the day when. I realized that the scene concerned Mozart offering the Requiem as an example of his work to the messenger, the masked messenger, and for Salieri literally to eat the manuscript, to devour it and spit it out as if it were both desirable and poison, and actually to say, to reveal him, who he is and say, we're both poisoned, Amadeus, I by you and you by me. And it is, of course, melodrama. It obviously never happened, couldn't have happened. And I like it for the fact that it couldn't have happened. It became pure theatre uh, at that point. Um, I wanted an atmosphere more like one of the tales of Hoffman, um, using the iconography of Mozart's last year, the grey messengers. Uh, the scene. That, I like most in the movie, perhaps possibly the only scene I really like in the movie is the, uh, fully, is the confrontation scene when Mozart is in bed dictating the confutatis to Salieri, who half wants to take it to pass it off as his own work and half sits spellbound by the way in which a dying man composes this extremely complicated choral piece, or part of it, out of his head which Mozart could do, of course, because he composed things entire and then just wrote them down, as if composition were merely a matter of dictation, of being dictated to. And I wanted to show that. I also love the fact that, the most, to me, the most exciting scene in the film breaks all the rules uh, that I'd ever been taught about cinema, that it has to be visual and that the sound doesn't matter very much. It's a scene about sound. The characters don't move. Uh, it's entirely what uh, you know, a professor of cinema might tell you was completely uncinematic. If you read the script, it's nothing but eight pages of musical direction, bar this, oboe, E-flat, um, so forth. Very boring, and, and we give an average Hollywood producer a heart attack to, to, to read those eight pages. But they, are, they do work, and they work wonderfully. And even more mysteriously, they are cinema. They're not theater. If you had that scene on the stage with a stage manager winding back a tape in the wings, it wouldn't work at all. But on the, on, the, on the screen, it works, I think, marvelously. You just hear one part, a bare trombone part, and then drums added to it, and so on. And it's, my, it's the scene I like most in the movie, uh, for that reason.